Hello everyone, welcome to another recommends video. In this video, we are continuing with the novel Children of Memory by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is part six for the first five parts of this novel and the first two novels in the series, there will be a link to a playlist at the end of the video. If you like this content, then subscribe and give us a like. If you have any novels that you would like to see done, then drop them in the comment. And now, part six. Miranda didn't try to fight them when Lip's uncle and his men grabbed her. He promptly sent people to grab the rest of Miranda's crew since they were suspicious of them all. She tried to speak to Mulder, Lip's uncle, trying to convince him that she and her people are not a danger, that they are there to help, but he didn't listen. Pretty soon, the mob came back with three bodies in Fabian's wagon, Portia and two dead men. It seems as if Portia had put up a fight. Fabian and Paul had their hands tied and they were both battered. Mulder demanded that they all be brought up onto the scaffolding to be hanged, even Portia who was already dead. When he turned to make sure that Liff was watching to see what was going to happen, she was gone. Liff managed to sneak out of town when no one was paying attention. She knew what was going to happen because she had seen it play out in her memories many times. She could feel everything coming to an end. She runs through the forest up to the cave where she sees the witch sitting on a stone just inside. She tells her that she needs her to stop everything. The witch says, what do you think I'm trying to do? And she says, I know what you need. You need all of them together. They're all together. They're in town right now and they're going to kill them. Liv then names her Avana Kern and says, you have to come with me. Then she grabs her hand, and just then the birds came down, one landing on Kern's shoulder, the other one on a branch. And together, all four of them head back into town. By the time they got back to town, Miranda and the others were already on the scaffold with nooses around their necks. The minute the people saw them, the people knew that Kern was not one of them. She looked and dressed differently. Mulder tried to get his men to arrest her, but the men take a look at her and they're afraid. Then Kern, speaking to Liff and the two birds, says, you better be able to fix it because there's no one else. And someone shoots Kern in the shoulder, but instead of blood, darkness comes out of her shoulder and begins going up into the sky. The darkness turns out to be a regiment of crows that are calling to each other and to live. The birds begin discussing among themselves the differences between Rourke and Aimer, and they come to the conclusion that between the two worlds, Rourke was the worst because everything was actively toxic. But Rourke had one advantage, the birds, and they made Rourke a success, and they were able to hang on and survive until the others welcomed them back to the universe. And they were able to do all that and survive on rock because they became able to understand rock. But now they need to understand Aimer with the help of Lif. Lif could see that there was something else running things, something she calls the wolf. So she turns to the birds and asks them, what is the wolf? And they don't know. Then she asks the birds, what are you? And they begin to tell her they are a mistake, a adaptive evolution, and a problem-solving engine. That on their home world of rock, the problem they solved was surviving. And they did that by analyzing and mimicking the technology and behavior of the humans. When Liv asks them why her, the birds begin questioning her. They say that she takes up a disproportionate amount of time in the world's attention. Liv goes on to say that she remembers things. Then they ask her who's her grandfather. She says he rest Holt and that he came to Aimer 378 years ago. When she asks a second time why me, the birds tell her that she's all they have to work with. By now, Liv can't tell what's real anymore. All she has is the birds. She finally asks them how do we make this happen. That's when they told her they have to bow a little. And then, all of a sudden, a whole bunch of birds started landing on the branches and trees 
and roofs around the area, and they were all gassy and ghastly. The birds decided that what they need is more processing power, therefore more birds, and that is similar to the way the portids use the ants. They then tell Liv that they need her help to identify and isolate the things that don't belong. She asks them again, do you know why me? And they say they know, but they haven't said so because they don't think she really wants to know. They go on to tell her that she can stop this at any time, that it is not them holding things like this. They don't have that kind of sway. It is all her. She wanted to make sure that Miranda is going to be okay, and they promise her they're trying to save Miranda and the others. Then she asks them what does she need to do, and they tell her, build a puzzle with us from all the different pieces. Then whatever is left over, that's ours to take away. So Liv goes through her memories and begins to isolate things that don't seem to fit, like when Miranda and her friends appeared, and they appeared at different times. Sometimes they appeared when the shuttle was coming down from the Enkidu. Other times they appeared in town in the middle of Landfall's expansion. Other times they appear just towards the end when things are going bad and they are hauled up onto the scaffold and hung. After a while she begins to see that Miranda and her friends, even though they have human bodies, they seem to cast different shadows, arachnid and tentacled, and Miranda seems to have a shadow that just is multiplying. And slowly, Liv lets it all go until she seems to be standing in landfall by herself. Then she hears Miranda start to scream. Miranda is trapped in her mind, running away, while the crowd from landfall is chasing her. She looks back and she can see Kern with the two birds on her shoulder telling her that she can't run forever. Among the crowd she sees her friends Portia, Fabian and Paul all in their natural forms chasing her. Then when she hears Kern's voice she snaps back to where she really is in the center of town by the tree. Kern tells her that she needs to remember who she is. He tells Kern that all she ever wanted to do was to help and that she's a monster. When she tells Kern that she's the one that ruined this world, Kern looks at her and says, don't be ridiculous. Why must it always be about you? Then Kern tells her that I may never had a future, that it was doomed from the minute the colonists put foot on it. I mean, they tried, but they were destined to fail. Then Kern asks her if she remembers who she is now. And she does, but she replies that she's not fit to wear the human shape, that she's a monster. And Kern tells her that she spent her entire time on this planet trying to make people's lives better. That she's been almost crippled by how much she really cares for people. And that she, Kern, will point out that when she was human, she didn't care about any of the useless monkeys. So by that metric, she is a better human than Kern will ever be. Miranda is in the fix-it shop with Kern, and Kern begins to explain to her what has been happening. It seems that they had only sent down one person in the expedition to look around, and that person was Miranda. She was supposed to find out about the colony and also try to find out about the signals they detected. And when Miranda didn't come back up and they couldn't get a hold of her, they spent some time trying to figure out what was going on, and they located an engine buried two kilometers in the earth near the location of the landfall colony. And what this engine does is that it records and simulates. And Kern thinks that the engine is older than she is. When Miranda steps outside Fabian's fix-it shop, she sees everything in ruins. Kern wants her to go back inside, but she refuses, so Kern follows her and begins telling her that there was a colony on this world that was started by the crew of the Enkidu, and they built it, and it lasted for some time, but it finally died out. All that Miranda is seeing around is the decay of everything after the original colonists have died out. The engine isn't trying to simulate the universe, it's just trying to simulate the colony on this world. When Miranda arrived on the planet, the machine 
read her and copied her into the planet and tried to make her fit. But because of who she really is, it failed. So it kept trying to make her fit many times as different people. When the machine first contacted her and recorded her, she lost control of her body and the shuttle she was in crashed. And when that happened, the human part of her, Miranda, was pulled back into the collective. Kern goes on to say that when the machine copies you, it's a shock and you feel it. And by the time they were able to find a way to come down safely, they couldn't find anything that was left of her. But after a while, they realized that part of her was preserved in the simulation. And the simulation kept trying to fit her into events and failing. Eventually, they figured out how the machine works enough so that they could extract her and put her in a new body. Kern then tells her that they're still in the simulation, but in a quiet part of it. Kern then tells her that she watched them hang her 37 times. Apparently, the machine would run the simulation to its conclusion and then start over. Kern goes on to tell her that Liv was a colonist who commanded a large amount of the simulation's attention, just as the original ship's captain did. And when Miranda was pulled into the simulation and things started to go wrong, the simulation began using Liv or Holt to try and fix things. And the simulation would use those two because Holt was the first colonist and Liv was the last colonist. And since this is the end of the simulation, Miranda goes out looking and she sees Liv, who is skinny, and she is the last person alive in the simulation because she was the last person to survive in the colony. When Liv sees them, she asks them if they are watchers or if they are sickers. And then she asks them if they have anything to eat. And as Miranda asks Kern if there's any way they can help, that's when the simulation ends. Holt was piloting the Oshanabi, which is the last of the Enkidu's shuttles, bringing down all the stuff their new colony would need. He was having a tough time, not only because of the weather, but because this was the last shuttle they had, and it was in bad shape. When they finally made it down, he made sure that he was the first to get off the shuttle, the first to set foot on the planet Aymer. Once he was out, he moved aside and let his teams begin the work of setting up the colony. An older Holt is now watching the first successful things growing on the planet. He has gone up and down to the Enkidu many times, bringing down people and other machinery that they would need. Over the years, there was times when the colony almost failed. And he had to keep things in check because if he woke too much people and brought them down, everybody would starve. There wasn't enough food. Slowly, as things got better, he brought down more and more people. Then as things got better, Essie, his wife, got pregnant. Over the years, Holt kept wondering about the signal and kept promising himself that he would go and find it, but he never really did. Finally, over time, the shuttle itself could no longer fly, and he stepped down from the ruling council of the town they call Landfall. Things never quite got easy because this world had no fossil fuels, no fossils, and no way to make an easy and cheap f power. People were now learning skills of repairing machinery instead of manufacturing them. Finally, when he was old and about to have a grandchild, a daughter, that her mother was going to call Liv after his grandmother. That's when he decided to go and try and find the source of the signal they had heard before. And he never returned from that trip. This Liv was born several hundred years after Holt. She was born in a dying world. She was going to be the last child on Aimer. Things were very hard and there were very little to eat and everyone was in survival mode. People were very suspicious of each other. She grew up in a farmhouse that Hirest and Isi's children had moved into back when the colony was expanding. She had never known Captain Holt and she really didn't think of him as her grandfather. He was just some old man who was long dead who was the first captain of the colony. There wasn't any witch, and she never met anyone named Miranda. She never went to school because school was a luxury she couldn't afford. People had better things to do, like trying to survive. Both of her parents died in an accident, so her uncle came to manage the farm, 
and would bring in people and chew them out when he got tired of them. She grew up hungry. She had to resort to hunting and eating beetles. There also wasn't any trees left, just a dead forest. Most of the farms had failed, and all those people came into the town as refugees. And there were gangs of mass people who was robbing the surviving farms at night. Her uncle grew hard and mean and would hit her often. And when there wasn't enough food for both of them, she went hungry because he would eat it. So one day she ran away and began running around with the feral kids. They scavenged and they did whatever they had to do to survive. Soon everyone was dead and she was the last. And she went most of the season without seeing another human being. She thought that she was the last human being on the planet and in the universe. Finally, she was alone and searching the empty streets for anything to eat. When she finally died, the colony was dead and the only thing left was the machine and it began running their lives over in a simulation, trying to figure things out. Miranda was back on the skipper, but she was afraid because she wasn't sure that she was herself. They never recovered anything organic, anything of the parasitic entity that was really her back on the planet. What they recovered of her was what was in the simulation engine that's buried in the planet. So Miranda that was on the planet in the simulation was played by her as was Fabian, Portia and Paul all played by her. Once they got her out of the simulation and brought her back to the skipper, they just regrew a body for the parasite that was her. And that was also the reason they weren't able to recover any of Fabian's drones. The simulation engine had taken control of the drones and who knew what it did with it. So Miranda on the ship had split into two. One of them went down onto the planet while the other one stayed on the ship. And once they isolated the Miranda that was on the planet and brought her back up, they had to develop and refine technologies that would get them to join together again. So now there was a totally integrated Miranda who had experiences of both the one that left and went down and the one that stayed. In fact, they almost did not go down and recover her. It was the Miranda on the ship that convinced them to go down and attempt to recover her. They also retrieved the two birds and uploaded them into clone bodies, being watched by the original Gathi and Gethli. While Miranda was in the simulation, three other ships arrived to join the skipper. Two were ported designed ships like the skipper, and one was an octopus-built giant watercraft. So she must have been down in the simulation for quite a while because while the ships can travel faster than the speed of light, communicating with each other is limited to the speed of light. And all three vessels had spent decades trying to understand the engine that was beneath the planet. Nobody thinks that the engine is native to Aimer. They think it's a relic of a civilization that used to travel the stars long before humanity ever reached orbit. And while Miranda wants to talk about the human colony that the engine has been simulating, everybody else wants to talk about what the engine represents. When she spoke to the Kern that was on the planet, she finds out that both of them are being excluded and everyone seems to be hiding something from them. Miranda then asks Kern if she goes back to the planet, would she come with her? And she said yes, because the current that was left on the ship is keeping things from her and she doesn't like it. The simulation has started and Liv is born once again. But this time, without Miranda to mess things up, the simulation runs just the way history of the colony did in real life. And so her life plays out over and over and over in the simulation. She only exists in the machine running a simulation and in Miranda's memories. Kern is closely watching Gothi and Gethli, the ones that were in the simulation and now have cloned bodies. She wants to know if they understand what has happened to them. They say they do, but she's not sure. She asks them if they understand that they were in a simulated environment in the human colony on the world below. They say yes, but she questions if they do 
because she tells them that they are now minds incorporated into bodies in the physical world and that Miranda is having some difficulty adjusting and comparing the simulation to the real. So they ask her, what about her? She replies that she has no feelings. She said she tried having feelings, but it didn't go well. They realize that she wants them to explain sentience. She says to them that they think, and they reply, you think, we think. But they don't believe that they think. They believe that what passes between them is mechanical complexity. The argument is that humans and other biological evolved calculating machines feel that they are sentient when sufficient investigation say that it is not so. That sentience, as imagined by the self-proclaimed sentient, is an illusion manufactured by a sufficiently complex series of neural interactions, a simulation. So their argument is anything with sufficient complexity is sentient, whether it thinks it is or not, or nothing is. And they think that nothing is sentient, including themselves. And further, they argue that the engine that created the simulation is complex enough to be regarded as sentient. They also argue that when they were in the simulation, they didn't know that they were in a simulation. It was so real. So being in the reality of the universe, they could be in a simulation and you wouldn't know it. And so it doesn't make a difference whether you're in a simulation or not. By the time they were ready for the meeting, Kern had dropped the barrier that was there between both sets of birds to allow them to commingle. Kern was positive that they would be okay because they were capable of accepting that a simulation is a simulation, although it looks real. The next person to visit Miranda was Kern, and she was wearing a body that wasn't hers. In fact, she was wearing a body that looked like Miranda. And she said that this is what they had ready, and that's where they put her. They were going to use this in case they couldn't integrate ship Miranda with simulated Miranda. She asked Miranda if it would be a problem, and after discussing it, Miranda says, no, it just seems strange. But what Miranda really wants is to find out what everyone is hiding from her, and she also wants to go back down to the colony to see what's going on. And Kern agrees with her, even Ship Kern, or as she calls her, Greater Kern, is keeping things from her. So this Kern decides to take matters into her own hands. She tells Miranda to secure herself. She intends to butt off a piece of the ship, the skipper, and head down to the planet. When Greater Kern sees them, Minor Kern tells her what they're planning to do. And Greater Kern asks Miranda if that's what she wants to do. And she says she has to go and see. Greater Kern doesn't stop them, but allows them to butt off peace from the ship and head down towards the planet. When they land at the coordinates where the remnants of the colony should have been, there's nothing there. There should have been some sort of ruins, something, but there was nothing at all there. Finally, Greater Kern comes over the radio and tells them that she's sorry, that they didn't know how to explain it to them. They were so fixated on the fine details of what they remembered and they talked about nothing else. So when her rebellious sister took steps to go back to the planet, they figured it was best to let matters take their course so you could see for yourself. What they did find after looking around was a crash site of the Urshanabi. That's when Greater Kern comes over and tells her that she's been traumatized enough and they didn't want to do anything that could jeopardize her well-being. But it turns out that there was no colony. The last functioning shuttle from the Enkidu did not survive its original landing. It crashed with no survivors. So in reality, there was never a colony. Lif never existed in reality. Her parents never existed. And that first generation that landed on landfall never existed either because Holt had died in a crash when he tried to land on the planet the first time. And since the shuttle they were on crashed and burnt, there could never have been any children that would have resulted in Lif. So while she didn't exist in reality, she still exists in the simulation. So while there was never a colony in reality, there was a colony in the simulation. 
Kern Minor was confused. She asked, how can it just not be there? Kern Major told her that the colony was never founded, that nobody got down from the Enkidu alive. That's why they were confused when she and the birds described the colony to them. That's when they realized that it must be a simulation. Then Miranda figured it out. Apparently, the simulation engine doesn't just record events. It speculates and runs experiments. And it tried to figure out what would happen if Holt and the others had arrived safely. It copied them so perfectly and ran its experiments so seamlessly that they believed that they landed on the planet and set up a colony. Miranda, of course, wants to do something to help the simulated people of landfall. She begins to argue that the people in the simulation are consciousness and true sentience. Kern Major disagrees. Then Miranda says, what if it wants them to interfere? What if the machine wants them to interfere? Kern Major then argues that there's no indication that it wants anything, that it is just doing what it was designed to do. But Miranda says, except when we entered the simulation, we gave it new tools and events, and it kept trying to find a way to put us in. She thinks that the machine is trying to get the colony to live. Kern Major, of course, disagrees, saying that it's not really life. But Miranda points out that they do everything with minds now. They change them, put them into new bodies, transfer them, store them, and we always remain ourselves. So what difference does it make if you live in a simulation or not, so long as you believe in you? That's when Kern Minor tells Kern Major about the birds and what they think, that nobody is really sentient. That's when Miranda says, the engine does what I do. And she says, if we don't have a duty here, then when do we ever? And what's the point? So Miranda goes back up and talks to the two birds, the original ones. It seems that they are working quite well with the cloned ones. And one of the other ships brought another 36 birds. And all of them are now working together to try and figure out the engine. What she wants from them is information and a plan. Once she has her plan, there is a meeting and she tries to convince everyone, but they're all skeptical. Not because they can't do it, but because of the ethics of it. After they discussed it for a while, Miranda comes up with a compromise. They would wait for the end of the simulation, and then when it's Liv alone, they would make a copy of Liv's mind and put it into a blank body. Then they will get Liv's opinion on the matter. Later, someone comes from the octopus ship to visit her. It was the original Miranda. She had allowed herself to age. The original Miranda told her that she liked what she had to say and that she thought of her a lot and she's proud of what she has become. Miranda replied to the original saying that she did what you would have done and she did her best. The original told her that it was what she would have wanted to do but she wasn't sure she would be brave enough to do it. They hug, and this makes Miranda feel like she's part of a family. Gothi and Gethley were discussing the differences between being in the simulation and reality, and they decided that being in the simulation was just a bit more coarse than the real thing. Otherwise, there was no difference. And they know that Miranda thinks that the simulation was using her to try and change the outcome of the colony that it had allowed to develop. And if she's right, then that would allow them to have some interaction with the simulation. And that means that they might have something to offer it in exchange for knowledge. Because as far as they're concerned, nothing is more important than knowledge. So they're going to reinsert Miranda into the simulation. But this time they're going to give her moderator privileges so that she's not going to forget who she is and why she's there. The simulation is running and Liv is the final person in the colony that's alive. She's desperately searching for anything to eat. She is also searching for firewood because she can't get any of the generators to work. As she walks through the center of landfall, she suddenly sees two women walking towards her. 
One of them is short and dark, and the other one is tall and pale, and looks like a witch. At first, she's afraid and thinks about running, but then there's no place to run to, so she asks them if they are suckers or if they are watchers. Then she realizes she doesn't really care, and then she asks them if they have anything to eat, and she begs them. The shorter woman kneels and holds out her hand and calls her by name, saying they do, and asks her to come with them, that they have food, a warm place, and all the help you would need, and tells her her name is Miranda, and they want to help her. The tall woman looks annoyed, but Liv holds Miranda's hand, and when she does, everything just seems to be better, and she feels that everything is going to work this time. They had to repeat it many times because they had a lot of failures, but finally they got it right. Miranda is finally leaving, heading out to see more of the universe. There's a lot more people here now because many ships have come since then because a lot of people want to be involved in this very unique project. Other engines have been discovered in other parts of the universe based on the clues that were discovered on Imer. And although she is going, she is still leaving part of herself behind. A new Miranda will stay to study Imer. Portia and Fabian will be going along with her, along with Gathy and Gethly. Paul, Jadri, and Bianca are all staying. One new companion who is going to be going with her is Liv. And Liv has allowed herself to be encoded in Miranda's cells. They have grown a body for Liv that they have implanted her mind in. But before they leave, there's one more thing that Liv has to do. She and Miranda go back into the simulation. This time, Liv comes back with moderator privileges. Once they are in the simulation, she tells Miranda that she could always sense it out here, at night especially, when people were asleep and dreaming. She leads Miranda to a spot just before the trees. And while Kern is in their air telling them that the simulation may have become a self, they can sense something in the darkness. And Liv is here to tell it goodbye because it allowed her to leave. And that's the end of the novel. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe, give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.